Hey there, welcome to my channel, I'm B. I'm the developer of Witcher Academy, a life simulator where you are a wizard apprentice and you have a fluffy cat as a spirit companion that goes with you on your adventures. You live in this academy and you take lessons to train your skills. Uh, you can go to the botanic class and take care of your own garden and grow vegetables, you can make potions and all sorts of things. So today I'm going to start a new series where I explain different concepts. Uh, so it's not going to be a complete project from uh, start to like a complete level, but we will have elements and they will be connected between each other. Uh, what I want to do is to explain simple concepts that you can apply in video games, which are things that I normally use in, in Witcher Academy or other games and I consider them useful. So for this first video, I'm gonna explain the dot product, which I believe is very, very important in general. It can solve many issues. I have two examples in this video, which is we have this character with that giant sashimi, and we have that cat. When we cl are close to the cat, the cat will look at us. And that only happens if we face each other. If I go, for example, behind, as you can see, nothing happens. And well, depends on the uh -huh. angle. Uh, it will do that sound and it will show the the little UI. So uh -huh. it's just a simple example to uh -huh. illustrate the dot product, which in this case is very, very useful. I'm gonna put somewhere this project, but uh, just a simplified version because I'm using some assets that I bought and I can't give you that. I will give you the little robot, which is uh, public available from uh, Quaternions. I'll put the link below and I'll put all the links where I found all the assets. Uh, the cats also bought, so I cannot give you that, but I'll replace that for the mannequin. So you will have in this project, you will have the same uh, example here in maps. And you have a simplified version, so you can follow along with the code. Okay, let's get to it. First things first, let's take a look at what a dot product is. A dot product is an operation between two vectors and through some mathematical simple operations, we get a number, a float number, and that kit, uh, can give us different uh, situations. So I'm gonna show you some graphics to see, to illustrate this. In this first situation, we have the, uh, the character, in this case, the mannequin uh, behind the cat. So I'm using this, uh, this is the forward ve vector, which is a vector, very handy vector that gives us the forward direction, or let's say the a vector that is in front of the on if ca character. So I'm using those vectors because they are length one, and it, that's very useful when you do dot operations on other type of operations like this. So I'm ha I have this dot uh, forward vector and this one. This is our character, and this is the cat. Let's say this is the robot. So if both vectors are parallel, as you can see, this is the, the, the same direction as this one, which is they are parallel. It will give us a dot product, which is positive, uh, greater than zero. So in this situation, we don't want to uh, the cat look at the, at the character. The next situation is the, the one that we want, which is they are facing each other. And in this case, as you can see, we have the forward of the character and the forward of the cat. Uh, they are opposite directions, and that's the idea. And that is a negative uh, value, so that will be less than zero. And finally, the last situation we can have, which can be also useful for other situations, and something that I'm going to show you, the, the last thing I'm going to show you in this video, uh, is if they both are perpendicular. So this forward and this forward. Uh, let's say this character is right here, so it's looking at the side of the cat. Uh, it will give a zero, which is that means the the direction is perpendicular. 
Uh, so in this situation, we also don't want the cat to look at the character. Let's move on now to the code. I'm using Blueprints and C++. And I have some basic code already prepared. For example, I have this interface, which is an interactable uh, to interact with objects. I have the cat, I have the, the, the character. So everything's already set up. I'm using the basic uh, template, uh, third person template to start with all of this. So it's easy for you. But as I said, I'm going to post this uh, project with all the code so you can take a look at everything but we're interested in the dot product so i have uh, here i have the cat which is uh, just a normal character it that uh, it doesn't have anything else and yeah it's facing that's the forward direction and i have this trigger to detect if uh, there is uh, the player is there uh, all of this is not the purpose of this video, but it's easy to follow. And then for the player, which is the third person character, I added the, the sashimi, which I'll show you in a different video, probably how to do this animation. I'm using, let's say, Procedural animation for this. Uh, easy to, to make, but I'll explain that probably in a different video. So we have the same, we have the character, this is from the third person template, uh, just to replace the character and the, ani the blueprint animation, so yeah. Let's open the cat character code, which as I said is just a normal character, and this is an interface, an interface that I made for myself for different videos. But basically, uh, what we are interested in is uh, the trigger that I had. Uh, it has the begin overlap and end overlap events, so I can detect when the player, the how to character player is uh, uh, there inside, so I can do the dot product. If we go to the begin overlap, the event, uh, first I have a few things just to detect if it's the, the player that we are interested in. And now we have the dot product. I'm not going to explain the maths, maths behind it, but they are very easy. You basically uh, take the two vectors and multiply each component. So you will have x uh, times x plus y plus uh, times plus and z, the same and all of that combined together will give you a number. There is another alternative, which is the cosine of uh, the two vectors. I'm going to have an article written about this and you can see the maths. But normally when you work with uh, Unreal 4 or Unity, you will have this type of operation. So you don't have to worry the, the maths behind that. So I use dot product. And as I said earlier, I'm using the forward vector of two elements. So for that, we can have get actor forward vector and get actor forward vector of this cat. So this is the character, which in this case, the robot. And this is the get actor forward. I added this log so I can see the docked product and that helped me to see what I want. Uh, in this case, as I illustrated on the, on the pictures, I'm interested in the opposite direction, which is uh, less than zero. So if that happens, what I want to do is an, it's a few operations, which is this look at, which is a function that I made for for this uh, to look at the, the cat is looking at the, the character. And I do the same with the player. As I said, you can check the code of this. I'm not going to explain all of this. I will do it in a different video. I have a few more things. I have I show the UI uh, with the character name and I sent uh, I call this blueprint implementable event. So only in this situation I want to do this. So this is very useful. You can use this for other NPCs uh, to detect if they are facing each other. So you can rotate the NPC to talk to it. You can use it with enemies to see if uh the player is behind or the other way around so it's very very handy this event this uh, blueprint implementable event 
Uh, I'm using this to produce that sound. If I go to the cat character, the event graph, this is only gonna happen on that situation. So I will spawn this, this simple sound to detect the meow of the cat. The last example I'm gonna show you is how to use other type of situations. So I have this box here, and if I get close and press the A key, or well, the A on my pad controller, it will move. So I'm using again the dot rod to see where I have to move the, the box, depending on where the robot is. So I used this in, a, in my previous series of videos to make the push animation so the robot can push the, the box in the right direction. So that was very useful for me. Yeah, and this also I'm using the dot product. It's very simple, but I'm, uh, have, it's a bit more, the code is a bit more complex. Uh, so this box is simply another interactive and uh, interactive and when I press the A key, it will interact. All of that is on uh, my code, you can check that out, it's easy to follow. Again, I'll probably explain how to do those things in a different video. Let's check the code. Uh, the important thing to remember here is this arrow, the forward arrow. If you rotate this whole object uh, around to face a different direction, it won't work uh, as you expect because I'm not applying the local rotation of this object, I'm just using the, the vectors. That's why this object is facing that way because that's the forward and if I rotate this, it's not gonna work. Here we have the basic interactive, that box, and again, it's a simple actor with that static mess, nothing difficult to implement and this on interact implementation is just a method that I, it helps me to interact with the object when I press the gamepad but what we are interested in is uh, how I use the dot product in this case uh, for this example I'm using again the actor forward vector of the player character the, the robot and they get actor forward for the basic interactive basic interactive and i'm doing that for every phase of the of the box so we have four phases uh, so i'm using i'm detecting the dot plot of each phase so for forward for um, player and the, uh, the basic interactive facing the para to detect the forward, the direction forward, just use the forward vector. Uh, for the back, let's say I use the player actor forward and the forward pair in the negative direction. And for the other two faces, I'm using get actor forward in the character and the right vector, which is a similar vector of forward vector but in the right direction also very useful for these type of things so you can see all of those there so the x will be the forward direction and the y will be the right vector so yeah that's the forward and that's the right and it will give us a vector of length one as well in that direction with those elements we can detect what is the direction of the object to move I'm also using a clamp for all of them, so I will have basically 0, 0, and 1, and node out of this. Uh, that's what I want really, I don't want any more, so this is honey. And now with simple ifs, I can detect which is the direction of the movement. Uh, I'm gonna use this direction to move the object just a few steps uh, away from me. And just simple, simple leaves. I had to do some tests to detect what I wanted, but I basically have to see if the each of these elements are grading that the rest. So dot forward, then it's gonna move in the forward direction or away from me, from the from me in the forward direction. I do the same for the back, right, and left. So basically just detect if the, this, this one are rated that one, those ones. 
and that will give me the direction. And then I just need to apply that. So I get the actor location. I have these units to move the object and on that direction. And that's it. Uh, we can use this for other um, uses. Uh, it was used for me on, on that project to push the, the box, but you might find different uses for this. I think it's useful and think about maths when you have this type of situations instead of, for example, having four triggers on the box, you can sort all of these out uh, with uh, op math operations, less heavy, more performance. Uh, I think it's better to try to solve some things with maths. And that's the end of today's video. I hope it was uh, useful for you. And if it was and you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button, like, share, subscribe. It's very useful. If you have any suggestions of what would you like to be seeing in this series of videos, please leave a comment. And if you have questions, I have a Discord server to talk about programming. It's for Witcher Academy, but I have a whole channel to to talk about programming and real engine or even unity if you're interested see you next time on the next video bye